G'day viewers, it's uh, Aussie Roadshow back again. I'm feeling much better and thank you for your well wishes. Did you hear the BBFC? Many people would have heard that they banned the Human Centipede Part 2. What a disgraceful act of censorship that is. Well, um, I love the first one and I can't wait to see the sequel. Unfortunately for us, the film hasn't been banned here, so I can't wait for it to come out. If anyone knows the release date, please let us know. And speaking of the BBFC, they're no doubt going to have a problem with this one, Sex and Zen in 3D, which I saw a couple of months ago, as you can see, in Melbourne Central. And um, there's like no less than four rape scenes, I think, at least four, including one of a woman being raped to death. The worst rape scene I've ever seen in a movie is in the film Descent. If anyone else has seen that film, let me know what you think, but that rape towards the end was vile. That was the worst rape I've ever seen. Worse than irreversible. Anyway, I'm going to start off my video. Well, I've already started my video, haven't I? But I'm going to show you some day bills that I've picked up pretty cheaply. This one was only like 10 bucks. I've never heard of this movie before, but I really like this, this poster. It's only a duo colour, and look, it's only rated... Well, that's the old PG rating NRC that was used in Victoria. So it can't be too bad, but... um. That was a cool poster. I've just got it on my kitchen floor, but <laughs> good thing I've, the floor's clean. But yeah, I really like that, and I'll show you a couple of others that I've got as well. And this one here I loved as well, um, Scream and Die. And I, I love that one so much, I might get it framed actually. It's, it's just a duo colour. Actually, it's a tri-colour because there's a little bit of pink, but well, it's mainly a duo colour there, but loved that one, and that was $10 too. And this one of the Manitou, that was also $10, very cheap. And I have this handy, that's the old Embassy home video. Nice to have the poster for that. And I just need to get the DVD and everything now, of course. And a full colour poster of the entity. It's pretty average um, poster, I think, but nonetheless, nice to have a full colour one. And I think that one was $15 for memory. And this one is, well, what does that say there? Okay. This one is the uh, Island of Dr. Moreau. I love that sharp green colour, so that'll be a nice one to to get framed as well. And the last one in full colour is the House Where Evil Dwells. I think I saw one of these on eBay quite cheaply. A um, bit more than $10, but it's not super expensive. Alright, I'm going to show you my entire Applause Home Video Collection today. And I didn't think I had many of these, but I've got more than I thought. And I'm going to start off with perhaps one of the first releases, which is uh, Death Weekend. That's a Canadian exploitation film, or can exploitation film. Quite a rare tape, that one. And um, is a very underrated little thriller, I reckon, that should have an official DVD release by now. I think you can get bootlegs of it. Uh, this one I think I've shown before, Blood Moon. That's an Australian film with a double-sided cover. I can't be bothered taking it out, but basically piece of shit. I don't know what the story is because this is like the R-rated version and the DVD is rated M. Another one I've shown before ages ago was Space Avenger. Similar, uh, like a Troma type of film. Similar to Troma I should say. And this is a Troma one. Stuff Stephanie in the fucking <laughs> incinerator. Cool cover on that. I really like it. Oh, Twice Under. I recently watched this one. It's about a, a Vietnam vet who comes back with a bloody chip on his shoulder and lives on the sewers and he decides to take revenge on this poor dude who left him behind in Vietnam and shit like that. It's a piece of shit and I loved it. Uh, Phantasm 2 I've shown before with that really cool cover. Uh, Communion. This is based on the book, Whitley Stryber book. I actually read that book. It wasn't bad but the movie was pretty bloody average. Uh, I think I've shown this one before. Fatal Love with Molly Ringwald. <laughs> Still haven't watched it. I picked this piece of shit up at an op shop called Fire, Ice and Dynamite and that was one dollar. Rated G and it's got Roger Moore in it. I've shown that one before, this piece of crap Domino with Bridget Nielsen. Oh man, that was a bad film. And one that wasn't too bad though was this one, The Dark Side of the Moon. And if you can imagine a film that's a cross between The Exorcist, Alien and um, like the Bermuda Triangle, you're kind of on a similar vibe as to what this bizarre movie is about. Uh, click the Calendar Girl Killer. I've only watched the first few minutes of this but it has a killer start with this sort of stripper type of thing and it looks like a, a delightful piece of trash and this is another delightful piece of trash that was sent to me, Bad Girls in the Movies. I've shown that before. 
an 86 comedy. I may well have whipped this one out before. Perfect timing. Edge of Sanity with Anthony Perkins. Not a bad little thriller that one. I didn't mind it. This one I haven't watched yet. Ramiro. This got Ro is that Raul Julia? Yep. Still haven't watched that one. I picked it up cheap. This one I picked up recently called Vietnam Texas. Uh, uh, because it's a recent acquisition, haven't had a chance to watch it. But if you've seen it, let me know what you think. Jackie Chan's Police Story 2 came out on applause. And the trailer for these looks just wild. I'm really looking forward to watching that. And just for the sake of it, I've dragged out the Village Roadshow of the first one, Jackie Chan's Police Story. And there was a whole series. Actually, this one's got them on the back. A whole series of those released. And the last one is this groovy looking thing called Peter Gunn with the gatefold cover and shit. And it looks terribly boring. I mean, it's only rated PG. And they look like they've just come out of the Young and the Restless set. It looks really bad. And on to some premiere releases. I've uh, got Time Sweep, which uh, is a trailer that I added recently, of course. And uh, that's quite a rare one. I I've been offered a lot of money for that one, but I don't know if I really want to let it go. And that's Brothers in Arms. That was when I added the start and end of the premiere thing. It was from this tape. So that's that's that. This one I only got recently too. It's called Paper House. I don't know anything about it. I haven't read the back either, but um, it says here it's a uh, fantasy thriller. And well, it looks reasonably promising, I guess, but we'll see. Hellgate. Now, this is another one I've been offered a lot of money for. But I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to let it go, but we'll see. Um, from memory, it was a pretty average horror, but the tape is really rare, so The Shadow of Death of. Um, Shown this one before, I think, with Anthony Perkins. It's a kind of prison based horror thriller type of thing. Um, Phantom Brother. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. I might have watched the start, but I think it was like a straight to video type of production and has no DVD release to my knowledge. Innocent Prey? That's an Australian movie. It is a piece of shit. I managed to get through like 30 minutes and I thought, I, I'm not spending another second on this movie. Oh, let's beat up this one. The Fourth Man, that was directed by Paul Verhoeven. Grunt, the wrestling movie. That looks good. Can't wait for that one. Yeah, right. And the last one I'll show, Angel 3, which completes my Angel trilogy, because I've got one, two, and three. Here are a bunch of other random tapes. I added the start of this one, of Blood Tracks. That's the, the old um, Avatar slash Canon video release. Now this one's got a horribly faded cover, this one called Silk. I think it's one of those Filipino movies. And the sequel, Silk Part 2, they look craptastic, I'm sure that'll be a bit of fun. Born, Body Organ Replacement Network. It's a CEL film. And lastly, guess who won the Pawn Brokers? It was me! On eBay, that is. These are quite rare, I paid a bit of money for this, I have to cover the naked lady. But um, I just love these vibrant videos. I used to rent heaps of these after I turned 18, back in the early 90s, but never this one. Because I think I was just too embarrassed because of the title and the naked lady and whatever. I mean, these days I couldn't give a fuck, but back then I was a little bit more self-conscious, you know. But a very cheesy 70s doco from the UK. Copenhagen, Denmark. The pornographer's paradise. The porno capital of the world. And there's a little bit of hardcore in it as well, so I'm surprised it got an R rating, but anyway, that's a pawnbroker's, quite a nice collection I've got now. In fact, I might show you my collection up the front room, just a sec. Okay, so inside this Japanese cabinet, I've just got heaps and heaps and heaps of tapes, as you can see. And um, the great thing about Japanese furniture is that it all comes apart. So the sliding doors come out, those shelves come out. Just put that door down. All these come out. The whole thing comes apart. What's in there? What's in there? Some old PlayStation stuff. Yeah, so it's really lightweight and easy to transport. But look, I'm not here to fucking sell Japanese furniture. I'm here just to show you what I've got. Well, I've got the Antichrist hiding in the corner there. But these are all my explosives. I'm pretty proud of this collection. Um, I don't have all of them, of course, but... And it's too deep, by the way, so I've got some hiding up the back there, as you can see. Rats and squirm and shit like that. 
And then we move on to the Vibrant label, which I think has become my favourite label now. Just got the camera on the side so you can see what's there. That one I just showed you, that's my favourite one, followed closely by that one. Savage Connection Mint Condition I got from eBay off 10 Clear Out. And that one I got off eBay as well for a huge amount of money. But most of these I picked up really cheap, like for 2 or $3. So I'm not complaining. Like even though it costs heaps to buy, I don't give a fuck. I'm happy to pay considering how many I got cheap. Like all these I got for like 2 $3, whatever. Even a dollar in some cases. That one was cheap. Um, I've got two Shame of the Jungle, but that one's a Palace re-release with different trailers on it, so that's why I keep that one. That's also a Palace re-release. And these are the other ones I've shown you. Of course, that's one of my favourite ones. Caligula. I wish I had the Burgundy softbox, but I don't. Insatiable came in a Velvet black box as well. That's a great film. And there's two in the Mazurka series. There was one called Come to My Bedside, which was on the Palace Vibrant label. And that one, Chatterbox. At the back here, I have, I think, K-Tales. Let's have a look. Yep. K-Tales hiding away up the back there. Okay, um, down the bottom here, of course, are just the road shows. I've, I've gone over these before. I don't need to fuck around doing this again. So, yeah, just all the horrors sort of thing. And what I like to call my um, Canucksploitation Corner. It's all lots of Canadian movies there. And... Um, Pretty proud of that because I think that's pretty much all of them. Stone Cold Dead and Cross Country. That's a great film. Gosh, that should be out on DVD. And the Key. It's a dead fuck. They're not Canadian. It's a Brazilian and Italian film. Whatever. And what else have we got, Danny? Oh, Endless Love. <laughs> when you're coming back, Red Rider, and When a Stranger Calls. They fit together, you know. There's some British sort of horrors. Pete Walker, Andy Warhol. Mother Load and Serpent's Egg sit together. All these are Ralph Bakshi, Richard Pry, Get Crazy, Wacko, etc. So you can see they're in some sort of order. Crude order, but anyway. Um, and did I say they're too deep? They're too deep as well. To give you an idea, there's about 250 tapes in here. So um, that's how much room you need. Just heaps of room. And that's just a fraction of what I've got. People always ask me, how many videotapes do you have? To be honest, I don't know. I don't know how many I've got. But anyway, that's where I'll leave it now. I'm pretty proud of this collection. Um, I'll see you guys soon, and thanks for watching.